In this section, we're going to take a peek at, uh, at rational functions. And with these, these rational functions, these are just polynomials written over a polynomial. We're going to um, identify several pieces of rational functions. We'll start with a graph, and then we'll work our way to, uh, to equations. So the first thing I want to talk about is the domain. And the domain is all the possible x values, all the inputs that we can have. And if I look at this graph, you know, we're going to assume it keeps going on forever in, in both directions and it just keeps doing what it's doing. I have all these x values less than 2 that are easy, all these x values greater than 2 that are just, it can be any x value, but it looks like it too, as like goes up here and goes up here. It looks like 2 is not part of the domain. So I will say x cannot equal 2. And what that means for the domain is that uh, it can be anything but 2. So x could be any number except 2, right? Because we kind of have this like gap here at this spot. And uh, that actually, the domain kind of goes hand in hand with um, the vertical asymptote. And an asymptote is just basically a line that, uh, or shape that describes extreme behavior. So I'm going to draw it right here. You can notice that this thing like, gets closer and closer to it here and closer and closer to it here, but it never gets here. So the vertical asymptote is kind of a no-go zone here. And notice it happens when x equals 2. So the vertical asymptote is x equals 2. Notice it's kind of the, the shadow of the, what the restriction on the domain is. Okay, we can also have what's called a horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote, you know, like the horizon, is a spot where it seems to kind of settle down. And it looks like it's here. My horizontal asymptote, notice it's kind of getting closer and closer to it in this direction and closer and closer to it in this direction, but it never actually gets there. Uh, so in this case, my horizontal asymptote is at y values when y equals 1. And this will always be the case. Vertical asymptotes will be in terms of x because they're left-right positioning. Horizontal or up-down positioning, so they're in terms of y. Uh, a couple other things we could talk about would be the x-intercepts and the y-intercepts. And what's nice is I know that y-intercepts happen when x is 0. And so I can see it right here. When x is 0, y is negative 1 half. And the x-intercept always happens when y is 0. So y is 0 here when x is negative 1. So I've got those two things. Great. So those are kind of my identifiers. And that's the way I can describe this graph. And there's one other piece I want to do. And that's to talk about... Uh, behavior. So one thing I can do, we've, we've touched on end behavior before, end behavior. So that'll be things like as x gets really big in the positive direction, as x approaches infinity, see what y seems to do is it seems to settle down to 1. It gets closer to closer to 1, which makes sense because that's where the horizontal asymptote is. So as x approaches infinity, y approaches 2. And then if we go over to the left, as x grows without bound in the left direction, in other words, as x approaches negative infinity, uh, y also approaches 2. It gets closer and closer to that asymptote. So that's end behavior, right? And it's extremes, as x gets really big in both directions. We can talk about a little local behavior, too. Now, the local behavior is interesting, and they're going to be what, what goes on around um, these vertical asymptotes. And we could say, like, as x approaches 2. But what happens is it does two different things, depending on if we're approaching it from the negative side or if we're approaching it from the positive side. So the notation for that is as x approaches 2, and it looks like it's, it's taken to a negative power or it's taken to a positive power, but that's not what's going on. It's just saying as x approaches 2 from the negative side, from the left. So as we get closer and closer to x from the left hand, uh, closer and closer to 2 from the left-hand side, notice this goes downward. So as x approaches 2 from the negative side, uh, y approaches negative infinity. And then as x approaches 2 from the right-hand side, ooh, it's going up, y approaches positive infinity. So all of these things, domain, vertical horizontal asymptotes, x, y intercepts, and behavior, both local and end, are the things we're going to uh, to analyze for all these.
Okay, well, let's do these things first. So the domain. The domain is about x values, what x is going to do. And really the things we need to think about for domain is we want to make sure we're not dividing by zero. So when we do divide by zero, x would equal one. So we would say x cannot equal one because therefore we'd be dividing by zero. That tells us our vertical asymptote is when x is one. In other words, on this graph, here's one, x can never be one because when it is, we're dividing by zero. Great, horizontal asymptote. Okay, the way to figure out your horizontal asymptote is let x get really big as x approaches infinity. As x gets really, really big, what does this thing seem to do? And so basically you can think of three over really big, like three over a million, three over a billion. Well, that's gonna approach zero, right? Three over a really big number is gonna be really close to zero. So our horizontal asymptote then is y equals zero. In other words, that. Okay, x-intercepts, y-intercepts. Well, the y-intercept is when x is zero. So plug in zero, three divided by negative one is negative three. So this should have a y-intercept there at zero, negative three. Uh, x-intercept is when y equals zero. What's interesting about this, since the denominator can't be zero, like that doesn't do anything to us. All we need to do is look at the numerator compared to this. Um, or, or you know, another way to think about that is from here, if you if you wanted to solve, you'd both multiply both sides by x minus one, right? And you get zero times anything is zero. Zero equals three, not going to happen. So there is none. This does not have an x-intercept. And then we could do our other behavior as well. Horizontal asymptotes tell us that n behavior. So as x approaches infinity, y approaches zero. Uh, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches zero as well. And then for the local behavior, as x approaches our vertical asymptote one from the negative side, well, just think about this. If these are negative numbers here, three over negative minus a negative is negative, that answer would be negative. So y would approach negative infinity. And as x approaches one from the positive side, something bigger than one, right? Like the first one was something less than one, so that bottom would be negative. Something bigger than one, that bottom would be positive. So positive divided by is positive is positive. Y is approaching positive infinity. That's what we're going to do over and over and over with these. Um, just, just for the record, let me grab Desmos. And let's see, 3 over x minus 1. There it is right there. And you can see I have my asymptote here. Asymptote here, there's no x-intercept, but that y-intercept's at negative three. Okay, domain. Well, we can't divide by zero. X squared, wait, this would be x plus one over x minus three times x plus three. There's actually two things that make me divide by zero here, one of them being negative three and one of them being positive three. So x cannot equal negative three, X cannot equal three. There's my domain. I'm saying X can equal everything else. That tells me my horizontal asymptotes will be when X is negative three and when X is three, right? In other words, one, two, three, can't go here, can't go here. So there's gonna be something going on in here, something going on over here and something going on over here. Okay, vertical asymptotes. Let's let X get really big. So as x approaches infinity, as x gets really big, what happens is you can just look at the first two terms. You've got x over x squared, which reduces to one over x. Well, as x gets really big, this goes to zero. So my vertical asymptote is y equals zero. So that tells me my, about my uh, n behavior, right? As x approaches infinity, y approaches zero. So we've got domain, we've got asymptotes, we've got n behavior, oh, x and y intercepts. The x intercept is when y equals zero. 
So let me think about that. Zero equals x plus one over x squared minus nine. The only way I'm going to get an output of zero is if the numerator is equal to zero. Like on this, I only have to solve that equal to zero, right? Because when x is negative one, I've got negative one divided, which is zero, zero divided by something. So the denominator doesn't matter for this part. So it goes to the point negative one, zero. Now my y-intercepts is what happens when x equals zero. So let's plug in a zero for here. Notice if I do that, these things that are circled become zero, I get one over negative nine. So my y-intercept would be zero, uh, negative one ninth. Okay. So then I have to do this little local behavior. And I, I do it like approaching negative three from the left and from the right, approaching three from the left and the right. I'm just going to do one side. So as x approaches negative three from the left. So let me think what I've got. I'll have a negative number up top, right? Because negative, a big negative number plus one, that would be negative. Here, negative three squared uh, something bigger than negative three in the negative direction, like think three, negative 3.5 would be larger than nine, minus nine would give me a positive number. I've got a negative divided by a positive, so that would be negative. So that would mean that as x approaches that, y approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches negative three from the positive side, well, um, this side would still be negative, but this side would be something less than 3 squared, which is less than 9. So that would make the bottom negative as well. Negative by a negative is positive, so y would approach positive infinity. And then I could do the same sort of thinking for dancing around the 3. Well, let's do some analysis on this thing. So the domain, I cannot divide by 0. So 2x minus x squared equals 0. I want to solve this. So let's factor out an x. Uh, 2 minus x equals 0. So it looks like x cannot be 0, right, from that, or positive 2 from that. So there's my domain. That tells me where my horizontal uh, asymptotes are at. Sorry about that. At x equals 0 and x equals 2. Uh, vertical asymptotes. As x gets really big, so let's look at this. Look at the, the, as x gets really big, the x squared terms take over, right? Like a million squared is substantially bigger than just a million and bigger than five. These pieces here just become like change that you don't even worry about picking up. So let's look at this, 2x squared over negative x squared. Well, that simplifies to negative two over one, which is negative two, right? The x squareds would cancel out. So that means the vertical asymptote is negative two. This thing will eventually settle down to negative two if x, as x gets substantially large. I'm not saying it gets there. I'm saying it gets closer and closer to it as x grows without bound. Uh, let's do x-intercept. So x-intercept is when y is zero. So remember when y equals zero, I just need to solve the top equal to zero. And this is not going to happen. Like if I subtract 5, I've got negative 5 equals 2x squared divided by 2. Negative 5 halves equals x squared. That's going to give me an imaginary answer. So, nope, none. Now let's do y-intercepts. Y-intercepts are when x equals 0. And if I plug a 0 into here, up top I've got a 5. But 2 times 0 minus 0 is 0. 5 divided by 0, undefined operation. There are no y-intercepts on this either. So then I can talk about my end behavior. And again, as x gets really big, uh, what does y do? Well, that's what this tells me. As x approaches infinity or a negative infinity, uh, y is going to get closer and closer to negative 2. And for those local behaviors, I could make some arguments around 0. What happens as I get closer to 0 from the left and right? What happens as I get closer to 2 from the left and right? I have a graph of it here just so you can see. It's kind of interesting. It's a weird graph. But notice here's that asymptote of 2. It crosses it here, but it goes over it and it comes back down towards it. And then it gets, as I zoom out, it starts to look like that. 
Now, hopefully you noticed that like I had to do some factoring in this denominator to make some sense about what was going on here. So let's let's keep that in mind as we're looking at this next one. And uh, actually, let's see, I've got x plus 3 over x plus 3 times x minus 3, which is interesting because uh, that divides out 1 over x plus 3. Uh, oops, that didn't divide out. That was the wrong one. That divides out. So it's x minus 3 in the denominator. Um, let's go back to our domain, though. If I think about my domain, this is my original function, right? So I still have to consider both of these. So x uh, cannot equal negative 3 or 3. But that negative 3 canceled out, or that, right? That x plus 3 that gave me the negative 3 canceled out. So what happens here is there's actually a hole in my graph. And I'll show you what that looks like in, in uh, just a sec here. Oops, Notice we have our asymptotes and all that, but uh, we have an asymptote at 3. But with this down here, remember, this was, this was the same as uh, x plus 3 over x minus 3. There's our shape. But what happens at negative 3? is I have a hole there because I can't divide by zero. So if something cancels out, the graph just goes through it like normal, right? It's like graphing 1 over x plus 3. Uh, sorry, x minus 3. They're the same shape. But this one doesn't have a hole at 3 because this one forgot that, it, it, that we cancel out the x plus 3. But our original graph, when we cancel something out, there will be a hole there because you can't divide, can't divide by zero. There it is, undefined. Boop, get in there. Ah, ooh. Come on. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Another example like that, like it could cancel out of the, the numerator as well. Like if we had something like, well, it will cancel out of both of them. If I had something like this, I'm going to factor everything first x plus 5, x minus 4. In this bottom, I can factor out an x, and I could factor that to uh, x minus 5, x minus 1. Notice that would cancel out. That tells me there's a hole at x equals 5. I call that a hole. Uh, it's called a hole a lot. It's also called a discontinuity, a removed discontinuity. So it just depends on how um, arrogant you want to sound to your friends while you're talking about it. So there is uh, the start of graphing. Uh, that's part of this section. We'll pick up the rest of it in the next lecture. Send me questions, message me, post things in the forum.